the importance of showman uh, is significant on a number of different levels. It is first and foremost the first film that Albert and David David Maisel's made together after breaking off with mm -hmm. Robert Drew. Um, so it's it's really a way of um, of creating their own kind of cinema, building in a way upon the foundations that Drew established, but taking them in some significant new mm. directions. Mm. Uh, preeminently, they wanted to break away from Drew's emphasis on the crisis structure mm. that was so important to Drew. This mm -hmm. idea of taking public figures, politicians, mm. celebrities, mm. and filming them in a very difficult mm. situation mm. and to see how they face the situation. Mm. Now, for Drew, this was less about this kind of melodramatic structure was less about the situation per se than it was about the revelation of personality under pressure. Um, now, crisis, crisis, yeah, crisis, exactly. Uh, and but what the Maisels wanted to retain, I think, was this idea of creating a film, a cinema, a documentary filmmaking practice that revealed personality, but without that uh, pressure mm. of uh, of the crisis situation on them, uh, on the subjects I'm talking about of the mm -hmm. films. So Showman was uh, certainly the first major attempt on their parts to mm -hmm. make that kind of film. So the structure of Showman has a kind of free, not a free floating quality, mm -hmm. but it's certainly much looser. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. anything that Robert Drew uh, was able to produce. Mm -hmm. And uh, it really has an almost, a structure almost of daily life to it because the Maisels followed Joseph E. Levine around for two weeks mm -hmm. and he gave them, uh, I would say unlimited access, but mm -hmm. certainly a fairly extensive amount of access uh, to his, uh, to his, not exactly his personal life, but certainly to his work life and to the various social mm. activities mm. that surrounded that work life. Um, so there was a way in which Shillman was a kind of breakthrough film in all mm. kinds of ways mm. in relation to this comparative looseness of form. Mm. No, uh, the, the idea for the project came about, initially the idea was to produce it as a one-hour episode for a television network. Mm -hmm. They were doing a series of films, one-hour specials on famous figures, world leaders. And Levine was proposed to the network, and the network uh, was not interested in Levine as a mm -hmm. subject. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the Maisels then decided to just make the film themselves. They approached Levine with the idea. Uh, he didn't really know who they were. Mm -hmm. He didn't care. Uh, but he, what he saw in the film was the potential for uh, a great uh, publicity item. Uh, it would be a great piece of PR to mm. have these two young guys follow him around for two mm. weeks and show him at mm. work. Mm. And so what he was expecting was this very flattering portrait of him. And what he got was not quite what he had imagined uh, he would be getting. Mm -hmm. And so once he saw the film, he was very displeased Mm -hmm. and would not allow the film to be either shown on television or to be released theatrically. So the only way that you can see Showman even today is through uh, museum screenings, film festivals, and so on. It is still, even Levine is dead now, his son follows his father's wishes and will not allow Showman to be screened in any kind of conventional theatrical way. Mm -hmm. Right. There's a good, there was, a, a, one of the things that Showman foreshadows is the kind of divided response that their films would engender. Uh, in the coming years. And when Showman was first screened at various festivals, uh, there was a good deal of acclaim for it, but also a good deal of criticism. One of the most famous criticisms of the film is by Roberto Rossellini, who said that the film was formless and the antithesis of art. And as he said, uh, a film like this is less than an experience. He had a similar criticism of the films of Jean Rouge mm. in the same period. Um, Louis Macquerel, the critic, though, acclaimed Showman. He said it was one of the 10 or 15 greatest films he had seen since the war. And Jonas Mikas was seeing in Showman something quite singular. Mm. He was seeing that the Maisels were doing something mm. that the cinema had not done before, that mm -hmm. there was a, some sort of breakthrough mm. in cinematic form here. Mm. That Showman was the kind of film that owed nothing to any kind of pre-existent mm. aesthetic forms. Mm. It was doing something mm. only the cinema could do. Mm. The other notable attack on the film at the time, uh, which has been largely forgotten, is the film was also attacked for being anti-Semitic. Um, the film was submitted to the Academy Awards for consideration, uh, and apparently at the Academy screening it was shut off before it finished because it was a feeling in the room that what they were looking at was anti-Semitic. And when the brothers showed it to Otto Preminger, he said Hitler could not have made more anti-Semitic film. <laughs> um, well, that film came about because uh, Wells actually approached the Maisels. Uh, at the Cannes Film Festival in 1963, and he wanted them to, he didn't really know who they were exactly. They were hot young documentary filmmakers. He had not seen Showman, but he wanted someone to make a promotional film for him mm -hmm. for a film that uh, he was planning on make, 
making, mm -hmm. uh, a, a fiction film, as he describes in the film itself, mm -hmm. that would have the form of documentary mm -hmm. cinema. And so the film he's describing in Orson Welles in Spain is was at the time a film he was calling The Sacred Beasts mm -hmm. that would later come to be uh, The Other Side of the Wind. Mm -hmm. And uh, the film is so interesting. It's 10 minutes long. It's not extremely ambitious in its form, but it's a, a very resonant film in a way because of uh, – uh, how it touches on certain things that will be mm. central to the Maisels mm. in the coming years. Mm. When Wells describes bullfighting in the film as a tragedy in three acts, mm. that the bulls themselves are tragic figures, mm. this kind of theatrical language mm. uh, is mm. the kind of thing that uh, the Maisels themselves will begin to use more and more, certainly beginning with Salesman, mm. which is very self-consciously mm. a kind of tragedy mm. uh, with tragic characters mm. in it uh, and with strong ties to American practices mm. of tragic mm. form, Arthur mm. Miller and Eugene O'Neill and so on. Mm. Mm. Uh, there's also something Wells says in the film that resonated, I know, very strongly with Albert Maisels, which is he described uh, the great things in movies, he said, are divine accidents. Uh, and in some ways, that's a kind of aesthetic philosophy of the Maisels in general, and I think much of direct cinema, which is the mm -hmm. great things that happen, in a sense, inadvertently through accidents, uh, through the tangential, through uh, the contingent, mm -hmm. uh, and how this can be quite revelatory, I think, certainly mm -hmm. for the viewer mm -hmm. and for the filmmaker.